everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Nicole Kitchen. I'm an academic trainer with the Center for Teaching and Learning. I am here today with Claire DeMarco, the director of the Center for Teaching and Learning, and we are going to be reviewing our PowerPoint best practices. So as we kick off today, we go through our session. Um, you do have some Zoom controls here, so let's review what you can do as an audience member. Um, we do encourage questions, comments, please put them in either the Q&A or the chat. We'll be monitoring both of those and we'll make sure to answer all of those questions as we go through. Um, this webinar is being recorded and you will be able to find it in the CTL Resource Center under webinars. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Claire. To all right. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Appreciate that. Hi, everyone. Um, so just a little overview of what we will be covering today, a little bit of PowerPoint 101. Um, so maybe some content that um, is, is review for you, but I always think that's a good thing. <laughs> Nothing wrong with reinforcing content. So a little bit of PowerPoint 101. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how to approach designing and de developing a PowerPoint. Um, and then we're also going to touch on some resources and um, support. And as Nicole mentioned, please definitely do uh, throw your questions in there. We want to make sure we're, we're tailoring this to you and what, what you're hoping to get out of the PowerPoint today. Okay. All right. So we're going to play a little game of um, <laughs> would you rather. <laughs> Uh, so PowerPoint, unfortunately, since it's used so much, does get a really bad rap. And I've got a few statistics here for you. Let me just pull them up. Okay. So what would adults, US adults, rather do than sit through a PowerPoint? So 21% said they would rather do taxes <laughs> than sit through a PowerPoint presentation. 24% said they would be willing to forego making love if they didn't have to sit through a PowerPoint presentation. 20% uh, would rather go to the dentist. And then 18% would rather work on a, a Saturday, although we're all working different schedules now, so that might not be so applicable, but I'm assuming that's for your typical Monday through Friday worker. Um, so unfortunately, they get a bad rap. And what we're hoping to do today is talk through a few strategies to make your PowerPoints not be as painful as going to the dentist. Okay, so let's talk about some back to basics when it comes to using PowerPoint here at NCU. And I'm actually gonna come out of the PowerPoint for a little bit um, and show you where you can get the latest version of PowerPoint because that's key as well is to make sure you're using um, the, the latest version. So hold on one second. Okay, so here is my um, NCU1 homepage. Um, and first of all, I wanna show you where to get your PowerPoint and your other Office 365 tools from NCU1. So when you first log in, go ahead and uh, scroll down and this is your email, your Office 365 widget. If you have already uh, set up your Office 365, you can just click in here. This opens up your email, um, but you have this little toolbar here on the left. And up here in the top, you can choose your different um, apps, including PowerPoint. So this is all completely um, covered for free as part of being a student here at NCU. Um, and then not only can you get it through the apps, you can actually install it on up to five devices for free. So make sure you're taking advantage of that. Um, that it's included as part of your tuition. You definitely want to take advantage of it. I've got it in any single device I, I use. I've made sure I've downloaded it on there so I can um, do my homework on all those different devices. Um, on top of that, you do want to uh, make sure uh, that you are feeling comfortable and using the tool. And I'm actually gonna share a link. Uh, hang on one minute. Sorry, my, I've got those Zoom controls uh, covering my little link. I wanna copy and paste for you and put in the chat. So I'm putting it in the chat right now. Microsoft's Help Center, which has all 
little tiny videos and articles on how to do different things in PowerPoint. So if you're already pretty comfortable in PowerPoint and you're just like, ah, I can't figure out how to insert this graphic or whatever it may be, if you go into their um, support area, um, you can find resources there. Another thing I want to mention is LinkedIn Learning. You might not all know, but you do actually get LinkedIn Learning for free, again, as part of being an NCU student. It's a relatively new resource that we now provide. And LinkedIn Learning has tons of um, uh, training courses in there. And what's nice is they're very highly respected. You can actually use them as resume builders, uh, but there are uh, Office 365 trainings in there as well. So if you want something a little bit more comprehensive, hey, I want something like if I went to an actual class on how to use PowerPoint, you can find that in LinkedIn Learning. And to get to LinkedIn Learning from your NCU One homepage, you'll see this learning toolkit drop down. And just click on there. And then there's a little link to our LinkedIn Learning page, which shows you how to get in there and log in. And then um, you can uh, look for your Office 365 tutorials and trainings in there. Um, Quick note for those of you who have never gone in and used your Office 365 account from NCU One, the first time you use it, you do need to activate it. So from your little waffle up here, your course list, you'll go to University Services. And in there you have the Student Technology Resource Center and here it has the um, details on how to activate your account. So that's if you've never gone in there yet, but you're probably relatively new if you're in that boat. All right, I'm going to pull the PowerPoint back up. Okay. Okay, any questions at this point? I don't think I see any yet. Not right. seeing any questions. And of course, as we go through, you can put them in the chat or Q&A or raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, make sure we answer those. But nothing. Awesome, thanks, Nicole. Uh, okay, so before you actually even open that PowerPoint present or that PowerPoint software and start throwing things into your, your PowerPoint, I really recommend designing it before putting it into the PowerPoint software. And the reason why I recommend this is that one of the biggest issues we've probably all seen with a PowerPoint presentation is that it's pulled up and it's just full of text. Essentially, someone's taken everything they want to say and they've just typed it into the PowerPoint. And it's not very engaging. It can be hard to read. Um, so we, we want to um, avoid that as much as possible. So you can see here, I've, I've put up a little graphic off a uh, digital storyboard. Um, this is something that we use when we're designing a PowerPoint, a video, whatever it may be. And basically what you're gonna plan out for each of your PowerPoint slides is what is my imagery gonna look like? Not every slide has to include some imagery, but generally you're gonna to wanna to include some throughout your PowerPoint. So what is that imagery gonna be? What am I looking for in my imagery? Um, of course, always making sure we credit our um, images unless it's something that's your own that you're... So for example, I've done some screenshots in here of NC1. I don't need to do that, but I have some um, images that are decorative and in those I've uh, made sure to provide credit. And then I'm gonna think about if I'm actually live presenting this, what is going to be my spoken text? So what would be my notes? And then what is the written text I'm gonna have on the slide? And I break it up that way. And then that way I'm done. I pull up the PowerPoint and I can just enter it in and, and design it straight from, from the template. Any questions on that process? Oh, I see something in the Q&A. Yeah, uh, let's see, do, do you have a PDF of the template? We can definitely provide something like this for you. This was this is something we use internally on our team, um, but I would be happy to share this uh, with the group. So when we post this in um, our resource center, we actually post our webinars in the Q&A area. And then make sure when you look at the question, uh, look at the Q&A, uh, webinar. If you scroll down, you'll see any attachments. We can attach this to the to the pres uh, to the Q Q and A, the FAQ. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully that was clear. <laughs> but no, love to provide that to you. All right.
All right, I will hand it over to Miss Nicole. All right, so let's talk about some of the features now. So we've used the template, we figured out what we want to, you know, picture wise, content wise, um, what is gonna be in this, you know, this presentation, this PowerPoint. So once we get now to putting everything into the PowerPoint, you wanna think about the aesthetics. It's gonna be our big piece here. Um, things to consider when you're creating your, pre your presentation, the background. Um, there are an abundance of online templates that you can use through Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, so when you go in and download, you open your program, you can open a new PowerPoint. You have the option, and there's thousands upon thousands. You can put in you looking for an education background, maybe you're looking for a business background. Um, this will tailor your design um, to that template. But you want to make sure that it's easy to read. Um, you do not want a lot of distractions um, when you're looking visually. Because think about it, if you have a PowerPoint and you're in the audience member, is it full of text? Is the background yellow? Are you not able to see any of the text? Um, so you want to make sure you're taking those things into consideration. Um, branding is going to be another big one. So of course, as a student, um, we are open to using any PowerPoint unless specified in your assignment instructions. This, of course, the exception will be um, if you are doing your dissertation defense. Um, you will have to use the NCU branded dissertation oral defense PowerPoint, which is located in the dissertation center if you're a DSC student or in the applied doctoral center um, if you are doing an education program or you're in the ADE program. Um, so you have to use an NCU PowerPoint in those cases. Other than that, you are pretty much free unless I said specified in the assignments um, to use any PowerPoint and then submit that to your faculty. Um, another thing to consider too is the color scheme, making sure it's easy to read, you're able to identify graphics, it's not going to be too much overly abundant and maybe relevant to what you're trying to present. Um, so if you look here, you can see a very big difference between a welcome to kindergarten PowerPoint, which is going to be maybe, you know, focus on students and younger students versus a more corporate one, if you can see at the bottom here, that's you know gonna be a more professional branded PowerPoint. Um, so taking into mind the aesthetics um, before you start the actual design process. Um, and then we'll move on here. So talking about our NCU specifics, so like I said, dissertation, oral defense PowerPoints are gonna be located, located in the resource centers. Um, if you want to use a branded NCU PowerPoint for an assignment, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, if you go into our CTL Resource Center, you'll see a technology dropdown. And from there, you'll see our Microsoft PowerPoint resources. We have, let's see, one, two, three, four different colors that you can choose. So it'll be the branded template, branded imagery. You can custom design it as you want. Um, and those are in maroon, blue, green, and amethyst. So you can kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, depending on, you know, how you're feeling that day. All right, so aesthetics here, color and font. This is a big one. Um, as you can see, it is very obvious, the contrasting colors and fonts here on this PowerPoint. I like orange, it's in my color wheel, I use it a lot, but maybe orange and purple is not going to be the best color choice here. Um, so we want colors that complement the design of the template, um, if you're using, you know, we want to avoid using red text unless you're trying to point out something. And in that case, you might need to go ahead and bold it um, so it's easy to read from the audience member. Um, you want to make sure you keep in mind that your colors are simple and also accessible and color sensitive to any members who might, you know, be colorblind. If you don't want to use all red and blue, that might be very difficult for an audience member um, to read. So keeping kind of maybe the blacks and the grays. Um, when, you know, doing just common text. And then avoiding inconsistent sizing. So 28 is usually a good number. Um, now, if you are noticing you have a lot of text, so you're at 28 font, noticing a ton of text, we want to utilize those speaker notes. Speaker notes are going to be underneath your PowerPoint as you're designing it. There'll be a little box that says like insert speaker notes here. Um, also keep in mind that many assignments do require speaker notes. So you want to look and have your text maybe be a one line of reference, and then the additional information is going to be located below in the speaker notes. So kind of keeping your actual slides short and sweet 
um, and utilizing those speaker notes if you come to find that you have a lot of text on that screen. All right, and then here we have visual aids and as you can see the same kind of difference, good visual aids versus bad, um, making sure that they complement the information. So, you know, in today's presentation, if we had a bunch of images of pizza and pasta and foods and stuff, that might not be as relevant to what we're presenting, although fun and maybe engaging in conversation, you know, it's not gonna be relevant to what we're trying to explain today. Um, so making sure that those are, you know, complementary of the content and you want it to be a, a visual aid, you know, imagery is a really big um, part of the learning process and, you know, getting that content kind of embedded into your brain. So we wanna use visual imagery um, with the content to kind of connect the dots there. So your audience members are, remembering and recalling, you know, what you're presenting. Um, and then you can see here on the bads, you know, anything that's overlapping that is, um, you know, going off the screen, off the page, too big, too small, um, we want to avoid those and just make sure that they're, you know, really complimentary, um, the presentation. And then our little kind of last part here is our extra touches. So, I love transitions, they're fun, they're engaging, um, but we wanna keep in mind that, you know, as engaging as they are with the PowerPoint, they take time, they can be distracting. Um, we want to make sure that, as you can see, see it's spinning around in circles there, <laughs> we're not taking away from the content. Um, so all of our transitions and additional text, we wanna make sure that those are, you know, really useful, there's a point to them, um, instead of wasting time, so we want to limit those transitions to just a few throughout the presentation if needed. I mean, you don't necessarily need them, but if you want to use them from uh, slide to slide or maybe an intro or, you know, when you're finishing up, that's a good way. Um, but just avoiding all those extra spinnies and circle -ies and all that stuff. <laughs> it's probably good, you know, good there. Absolutely, Nicole, thank you. And someone did ask if you could provide the direct link to those PowerPoint templates in the chat. Um, yep, but that absolutely. would be helpful. They definitely want to check those out. And, and honestly, you cannot go wrong if you use the NCU um, PowerPoint template, um, which leads actually into the next part of our discussion today, um, which is around specifically your NCU assignment requirements. So quite often you'll be asked to create a PowerPoint as part, uh, as one of your weekly assignments, sometimes multiple in, in one course. Um, and they're a great, great way to mix it up. So you're not writing your, your typical paper um, when you get to do a PowerPoint. Um, but it can cause some confusion because PowerPoint is not included specifically in APA guidelines. So APA specifically provides guidelines on how to write papers. So when you're doing a PowerPoint, you have a lot of freedom um, compared to writing a paper, which is really nice. And the, how you set up your slides, the images that you use, um, it is completely up to you. Um, but there are a couple of things APA wise you do have to keep in mind. And it's all related around to uh, academic integrity. So if just like in a paper, if you are writing something um, that is not your own thought, not your original idea that you cite it, and just how you would in a paper with the author in the year in parentheses. And then at the end of your um, PowerPoint include a references slide. Uh, so again, uh, just like you would in a paper, that final end of your paper, you have your references page. Um, you'll just put that information on the final slide of the PowerPoint. And personally, how I do it when I'm working on a PowerPoint um, assignment is I do have a Word doc open where I put all my references in. And then when I'm done, I just copy and paste and put those in that final slide. So that's around academic integrity. Um, there are also copyright concerns with imagery, so make sure you are using uh, images that you are allowed to use, uh, and usually a website will be very clear if, um, uh, if you're allowed to use its imagery in your work. It usually requires you to, to say where they come from, and that's just generally good practice. So you can see um, the imagery here that I have up on the screen. Uh, this uh, lady is, is doing her NCU assignment, <laughs> we can assume. Um, but I got this imagery from pexels.com. 
Um, that's a great website. Feel free to grab that name, pexels.com, because it's a bunch of open access imagery that you can use as much as you want and just put a little note that that's where it's from. And you're totally fine. You don't have to worry about any copyright issues there. And it's, it's some really good um, imagery as well. Like I always think imagery of real people is much more effective than cartoony type imagery. So I, I can definitely recommend Pexels. Uh, and then the final component of um, formatting that PowerPoint in your assignments is to also do a title page. And again, generally what I include in my title uh, title slide is the same stuff that I would include on my title page in a paper. So the name of the assignment, my name, the faculty's name, the date, um, just trying to remember off the top of my head what those all are, you know, do it every week in my assignments. Um, and then that way, that information that really helps my faculty when they're grading and everything is still there uh, in my PowerPoint. Now, we talked earlier about how we don't wanna put a lot of text in our PowerPoint slides. But when you're handing in a PowerPoint assignment and you're not recording yourself presenting it, how are you getting your point across? And that's in the notes section of PowerPoint. So every slide when you're working on a PowerPoint file um, has a notes section and that's where you put your um, narrative. That's where you put your full sentences and what you would say if you were to be presenting. So keep the bulk of the text in the notes section, but definitely include notes unless the assignment instructions uh, gear you, guide you in a, a different direction. So I see some questions in the chat. So I want to make sure I'm addressing you. Yes. Okay. Ah, so pexels.com is P-E-X-E-L-S.com. And I put that in the chat and then we had another question here for clarification um, using in-text citations on the slides as you would a paper. So yes, just like in Microsoft Word, you would do the citation um, right on the, the slide, um, the same, same formatting. Yeah, absolutely. And you want that citation right where that piece of information is. So if you're claiming 30% 30 30 of people in the study did X or whatever, um, have that citation right there. So your faculty can easily figure out where you got that from. That's a great Perfect. question. Um, and then I see someone asked about adding voice notes to a PowerPoint. And yes, you can add audio uh, to a PowerPoint. Um, and we can actually, we're doing really great on time. So what we will do is once we finish with the presentation, we'll actually, I'll move this PowerPoint over the actual like editable view um, and we'll take a look at some of those features and we can look at where the, the audio features are. I will say, I don't think not either Nicole or I are the ultimate tech expert in PowerPoint, but what we, I think we are good at is figuring stuff out and knowing where to go for our resources. And that's really where you want to be as a student because we're using so many different softwares, PowerPoint, Word, when you get into your research and statistics classes, you're using that, you've got Grammarly, et cetera. Um, I don't think any of us can be experts, but just knowing where to go to get that help when you need it, when there's that one thing you wanna do, like adding a, an audio you note know, and you're just stumped where to go. Yep. Uh, and just um, real quick on the audio note, I'm also gonna put the link to the Kaltura user guide. Um, if you're trying to, let's say, record your presentation, um, either with yourself live on camera or just the audio, um, it is easier at times to use Kaltura um, instead of individual narration or if you have to input and embed audio on each slide. Um, so for that question, I'll, we will go over that, but I'll throw that um, Kaltura user guide link in also because um, you might find that just might be easier um, when you're submitting your assignments to your faculty. Yeah, absolutely. We have a really great question. So we've talked about not putting much text on the slide and now we're asking you to put in these in-text citations, which sometimes can be pretty long if you've got you know, multiple authors and they've got long names and you've got multiple um, points that all have different citations, for example. So what I do in my assignments is the text that is like the presentation text I have as, you know, whatever is a good size font, 24 point, would you say? Nicole. Um, and then I put the citation next to it and I highlight just the set citation and I make that small um, so that it's not really out there on the 
on the presentation and, and that tends to help balance it so there's not a ton of text on the page because you you really do have to put the citations in there's no way around it so i usually will put it down to like a 12 point um but that's a really great question because you're right there are slide count restraints and you can always think about as well like this slide right now <clears throat> i literally have no text on it instead of the title um so if i was handing this as in as an assignment uh, to my faculty and I was giving and I was talking about in my notes content that isn't my own original thoughts then I put the citations in the notes so I'm not going to put the citations on the slide unless the actual text on the slide is what needs the citation so that's another way around it as well um, and sometimes um you know, you might have different preferences from your faculty. It's always good to connect with them um, and ask them. You know, I am a very anti-text gal. Um, generally, my PowerPoint assignments, I have almost no text on the slides and all my content in the notes. And that's been totally fine. But maybe my faculty, a future faculty may ask for a little bit more on the slides. So it's always good to check with them if you're unsure on that balance. But generally, let less on the slides. It, if I had to reflect on what I've seen, <laughs> um, it's generally too much text on the slides. That was a really good question. Um, let me see. Yeah, so we, it looks like there's a few people, Nicole, talking about having to create a presentation where they speak. <laughs> and we'll, we'll show you a little bit more about culture so you know how to do that. Um, so Anne asked about using those free images. And you don't have to do anything in your tape, your reference page or formal um, citation for those, but just something to let whoever's watching, watching, watching or reading your PowerPoint know that that's where you got your imagery from. So just something as simple as imagery from pexels.com is totally fine. Okay. I think I saw something in the Q&A. Oh, maybe yeah, not. So we had a question here. Oh. Um, you have to include the NCU logo on all presentations. And that is, nope. <laughs> you can use whatever presentation template you want, unless specified, and unless it is the dissertation defense, um, the oral presentation PowerPoint. That is the one that has to be NCU specific with the NCU logos. Um, but other than that, you are more than welcome to use whichever yeah. you would like. And you don't need to have the NCU logo. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I would say is to err on the side of professionalism. Um, Nicole was showing some different PowerPoint slides and there was an example of uh, a PowerPoint that would have been for like, kindergartners. And obviously that you would make it fun and um, bright, but most assignments are probably gonna be more for a professional audience. So um, go with a more professional look and feel um, for those. All right. Um, ah, someone asked, what if they're using their own photo? We might have some graphic artists on the call. Absolutely. Those, yeah, that's yours. That's your work, your thought. I mean, per personally, I'd like to say, hey, I did this. So you could put the <laughs> from your studio or whatever you want to call yourself um, just to show off. But otherwise, yeah, you wouldn't need to, to give any credit there because it's all you. Good questions. Okay, I want to make sure I covered everything here for assignments, and I think I did. Okay. All right. So a lot of PowerPoint assignments, your uh, faculty are now taking it to the next level. They don't just want the file. They just don't want the PowerPoint with the notes. Um, they want to actually see you present the PowerPoint. And this is a good thing. I know some of you might be thinking, oh, I hate being on camera, um, but it's actually a really good thing. It's a really important skill in pretty much every industry to be able to um, deliver a, a good presentation. And a lot of times that will be with a, a PowerPoint by your side. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, when you're doing that as one of your assignments, uh, how you can be do a really good job. Um, Nicole has already mentioned Cultura. That is the tool that we recommend. It is an NCU tool. Therefore, we, we know about it. We can help you with it. Service Desk are familiar with it. If you use a different tool that maybe you have 
yourself, just the level of support might not be the same should you have any issues. So that's one of the big reasons to use culture. And hey, you get it for free. It's really easy to submit as an assignment if you use Cultura. Uh, so go ahead and 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 use that if if you can, unless you you have another tool that you're really really comfortable and confident with. All right, so you're ready to do your presentation. Um, the first thing I'm going to recommend is to take it nice and slow. Um, uh, you probably all remember back in high school, the dreaded final where you had to go up in front of the class and, and speak. And, and boy, did we talk fast in those <laughs> and just getting it over with, right? But unfortunately, that's just um, not good for the audience. They miss things. Um, you're more likely to stumble. So take it nice and slow. Uh, when you do eventually record yourself and, um, and, and when you're live, obviously, same thing, um, take it nice and slow. Uh, so I have that little image here of a, a snail <laughs> to represent going nice and slow. Don't see many of those in Arizona, that's where I live. Um, I also wanna talk a little bit about proofreading. This is a good skill in general <laughs> for all your assignments is to make sure that you take the time to proofread any work um, going back through it and what i would recommend is going through it from beginning to end to make sure it flows and then going from the end to the beginning to find typos and whatnot so when you're reading something in order your brain is already thinking ahead about what the next word is going to be, what the next thought is going to be. And even if you spelt something wrong, it might not catch it. But when you read it backwards, that's when you catch it. So just a little tip there for when you're proofreading. Uh, you also don't need to do it all yourself. You all get Grammarly for free. So if you have not set up your Grammarly account through the Academic Success Center and have that add-on in your Word and in your PowerPoint, I would love you to do that today. It is a lifesaver. It catches so much sentence structure. I mean, it is, um, gosh, it's an amazing tool and, and many students don't take advantage of it. It's a, and it's a free, it's a Grammarly Pro. It's the, would be a paid subscription if you were to get it on your own. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, so yeah, so we're going to proofread. And of course, when you're proofreading a presentation, that means you are going to, of course, practice it <laughs> as well. Unless you're super, super confident, you can just jump in and do it right away. The other thing, this is more for um, a live presentations. So I have here a, a lady saying shush, um, is in a live presentation that there will be times of silence and that's okay so especially if you're doing an interactive presentation where you're trying to engage your audience ask them questions um, and even if you are just reading like it's it's okay to pause <laughs> and have a moment of silence people feel they just need to um, fill up all the the time with with you with you talking and and, and that's not the case so don't be afraid of a, a pause here and there a little bit of silence to sometimes just a little reset a little bit and then move on to your next topic. And then finally, here we have an image of a um, some kind of uh, video studio. Um, looks a little 90s, but still, I think everyone does things with their phones now when it comes to videos. Uh, we absolutely recommend that you use your webcam. So not every assignment requires it. It might just require you to, to speak. Um, but if it, if it lets you, or if it's required, obviously, definitely use your webcam. People wanna see you. And it actually, like it helps me. So I'm, I'm looking at the PowerPoint right now. I'm looking at the Zoom controls, but I'm also sort of looking at myself. And I know that sounds weird, but it's helping keeping me on check um, to make sure I'm engaging with my audience. So we definitely recommend that you utilize your webcam when doing um, virtual presentations. Of course, if you're in front of people, which is very rare now, uh, you don't have to worry about that. Um, and always keep it, not on the PowerPoint, but always keep a glass of water with you. There's nothing worse than having that dry, scratchy throat and you don't have a water uh, handy. All right, I see some comments in the chat. I'm jumping there. Yep, and we had some questions here, um, which I believe will kind of go more towards with Kaltura when you're doing um, okay. those narrated ones. So I think you answered it yeah. a little bit here too, but um, uh, do you have to show your picture when you're doing a narrated PowerPoint? Um, if the 
assignment is narrated and it's not saying anything about being on camera, um, you don't have to. It's encouraged, it's an option, um, but you don't have to if it's not specified in your assignment instructions. Um, and then it looks like uh, we had a question here about having issues with timing of the slides. And again, that comes down to using Kaltura and we can show you um, because when you're using Kaltura, you're in control. Um, you're not going through and you're not on a, like a timer. Um, you're doing the recording, timing yourself. You have the option to pause, um, but you're the one hitting, you know, the next button for the slides. So there shouldn't be an issue um, with, with timing when you're using Kaltura because it's really just doing the recording. It's only doing the, the narration and the video part, you know, in your screen, um, but you're in control. So we can show you also though. Um, how that works. Yeah, I mean, a time where you're actually asking it to advance the slides <clears throat> by itself, that is an incredible presentation skill to be able to do that, <laughs> to perfectly time yourself um, for it to advance. I don't think I've ever seen that in a presentation, except for um, I did these little com competitive Pecha Kuchas, they were called. Um, it's where you You have a, I think it's 20 slides and they rate you on how well you um, transition with the slides. And the idea is, is that you perfectly say something as something pops up, you know, um, <clears throat> but that was just, that was competitive Pecha Kuchas. I've never seen someone in an actual presentation not use either a clicker if they're live or obviously like now I'm just clicking along with my mouse. And that's like, as Nicole said, you can do that with culture. So you don't have to worry about timing. All right. Well, that is the end of our presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we can show you a few things in PowerPoint and also uh, take a little look at culture as well. So I'm actually going to pull the PowerPoint over. Now you get to see if I'm really that skilled in PowerPoint. <laughs> Hot seat, Nicole. Here we go. Okay, Here we so go. Someone, Fire away. <laughs> so someone asked about inserting narration or audio. And I believe insert. Yep. And then to the right, yep. there'll be an oh, audio yes, drop audio. down. Mm -hmm. And then I can record audio or I can add audio from my PC. Um, so this, uh, you might have seen presentations where maybe someone's playing music or whatnot on certain slides. You can actually put in like a media file, uh, but generally probably what you're referring to is to record some audio. Um, so you can record the audio directly into the PowerPoint and then hand it in that way, or you can use culture and that allows you a little bit more flexibility. And then you can obviously have your webcam on too, <laughs> which we definitely encourage. Um, so while I have um, the PowerPoint up, are there any other specific little things that people just can't I'm not quite sure how to do in here that we can look at. If not, I'll take a little look at Cultura. I don't see any questions, so I'll minimize that. Okay, so when you are ready to do a Cultura recording, you're obviously going to have already created your PowerPoint. So your PowerPoint's done, you're ready to present, and now you're going to go into Cultura and do that. And your culture tool is up here under learning toolkit. So I'm not sure if you all have noticed yet, but we did have an update in NCU1 today um, where this learning toolkit was added. And that's where you're going to find your culture. So my media is your library of videos. And that's where you find your culture. So we go in here. And then depending um, if you've used it before, it might ask you to download things like that just follow the prompts if you do stumble and your computer saying no 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 it's usually some kind of security setting and if you can't figure that out obviously service desk can help you get set up um so you just do add new and then you'll click on culture or capture now this might have a bit of issue because i'm using my camera already for zoom so we'll see if this how much it likes this and then this is the little recording bar. And essentially you can record three different components. So the little microphone is audio. So right now it's set to just record my audio. So if I hit record now, it just it would just be my voice. 
Um, so to turn something on or off, you just click on it. So now it's recording nothing. <laughs> so I'll turn that back on. Now my camera is my webcam, um, either the one built into your laptop or computer, or you might have a little one on top. Um, so if I, I'm not gonna unclick that now because I know it's not gonna let me. And then the other piece you want to record, and this is how you record your PowerPoint, is your screen. So you've got your PowerPoint up on your screen and you're gonna ask Cultura to record your screen. So you turn that on. You've obviously got your camera on if you want to do webcam you hit record and then you essentially just walk through your powerpoint presentation and then speak into your mic and ta-da you've got a recorded um powerpoint presentation and that's how you use culture to do the recording then i can also show you how you then can insert it into your assignment i'm just going to go into one of my old classes <laughs> So I'm obviously not going to actually do it, but just so you can see. So if I go in here and then I click here. And now I've got to, I haven't done this for a while. I think it's here. Nope. Ah, sorry. Insert stuff button right here. And then you insert your culture. And then it pulls up your library. It's thinking a little bit right now. And you can just select it. And you don't have to worry that it's kind of thinking. It knows what it's doing, even if it looks like this. And then you just submit it. And now your culture video is nicely embedded into your, your notes section of your assignment and your faculty can see it. Now, depending on how the Dropbox has been set up, it might require you to also add a file. Um, so in the case of this, maybe add the PowerPoint. So they've got the PowerPoint file. Um, if, if they don't need that, you could even just do a, a transcript or a reference page, whatever you want to do. Basically, um, sometimes it does require a file. It depends on how they set up the Dropbox. Um, but that's how you would submit. Don't submit. <laughs> uh, to uh, a Cultura video. Okay, I'm hearing some good stuff about Cultura. Yay. Um, resources. So what I just showed you is kind of quick and dirty. You probably would need to refer back to a resource on how to use Cultura. So if you head, head into the resource centers drop down um, and go to the Center for Teaching and Learning. And under our uh, learning resource topics, if you go to NCU1, you'll see we have a Cultura user guide right here. And that just walks you through step by step on how to do it, how to record it, and then also how to upload it as an assignment. Um, it also has some information on how to edit your captions. So Cultura, another really nice thing about Cultura is that it creates auto captions. So this is really important from an accessibility standpoint. You never want to assume uh, that everyone who will be uh, watching your presentation can, can hear it. Um, so captions is a, is a great way to make sure any audience member can still get the most out of your presentation. And uh, you want to make sure those are clear. And it, it tends to maybe make mistakes when you introduce yourself. <laughs> that always seems to be the one. So I always go in and make sure it's my real name spelled correctly. Um, but you can edit the, the captions through culture as well. Okay. Okay, so we have a question around imagery for mental health. Um, that is a really great question, Janine. Um, we sometimes struggle with that too, you know, creating our um, training resources. Sometimes it seems very specific and you, you sort of have to get a little creative um, because of some of those more specialized images. Oh, we don't need to see that, my meeting planner reminder. Um, some of those more specialized images you're just not gonna find available like open access. So I try to sort of take a step away and get a little creative and think, okay, um, I'm talking about someone doing um, counseling in their practice. Could I find just like a picture of a couch? I know that's out. That's just an example I'm coming up with on the fly, but something that does symbolize what you're talking about, but maybe isn't super specialized of actually someone sitting in a therapy room or whatever. So that's sort of how I would get around that. Good question though. All right, any other questions? All right. 
I'm going to put in the chat um, some additional PowerPoint information on citations and references um, from our Academic Success Center. Yes, and actually, since we have the time and I talked about Grammarly so passionately, <laughs> to show you all where to go get your Grammarly if you don't have it yet. So whenever you're in any of the resource centers, just a quick FYI, because you might not have even noticed this if you haven't scrolled down, is we have quick links to all the other resource centers at the bottom. So I'm going to pop over into the Academic Success Center. And then right here on the main page, there's a link to my Grammarly and uh, gives you instructions on how to download it. And you will be shocked. If you're not using it yet, you will be shocked at what it catches. Like I thought I was a good writer <laughs> and then Grammarly mm -mm, showed me show me the true way <laughs> so definitely take advantage of Grammarly all right yeah and Janine mentioned you didn't know you could use Grammarly in PowerPoint yeah um, yeah it's a like a plug-in you can add it but if you um are doing that planning of your PowerPoint in a Word document, you can also run that through Grammarly as well. And yes, this the Grammarly Pro is is free for students. Yeah, I'm looking here in our resources. I'm going to throw this link um, in case you want to save it. Um, but the ASC has a PowerPoint presentation checklist um, that goes through to make sure that you're hitting that your assignment prompt requirements that it you know, the content and the text and URLs are active and closed captioning and graphics and art and all that fun stuff here um, that we just talked about. But it looks like they have a nice handy checklist um, that you can use when you're creating to make sure that you are doing all, doing all. Yeah. Um, if you uh, need some additional support, um, let me go back to the CTL. Just a little plug for our alumni navigators. Uh, so we have some folks in our team who are actual recent NCU alumni, and they've come back to um, give back a little bit and assist students, and they are available uh, through the CTL. Uh, you can do a question 24-7 if they're not available right then. Um, but here are their chat, chat hours where they're available via uh, live chat. So if you would like to speak to one of them, um, for, for general support. They obviously aren't your faculty. They're not gonna be able to provide answers to specific questions about assignments. Um, but if you just need some general support, like I can't find something, um, I need some help breaking down the assignment prompt. Um, how do I get to fold this in PowerPoint? Whatever it may be, that's uh, the, the, some good folks to, to connect with. Um, Amy mentioned that it the Grammarly keeps coming on for, for everything. Um, yeah, if you you can remove it from your email. I actually had that same issue where I was, I mean, obviously I want my emails to be decent, but that's not nearly as important as assignments and things like that. Um, so I did actually remove the Outlook plugin. Um, so to do that, I think probably the easiest way would be to, you can like search on your computer, just type in Grammarly and see all the things that pops up. And then you should see something along the line of Outlook plugin and you can uninstall it. But Service Desk, if you, if you stumble around a bit um, and can't figure it out, then Service Desk can quickly help you with that as well. And you can also just log in, kind of old school way of doing Grammarly is actually log in at their site and upload your paper in there. And it will check it that way as well if you prefer that sort of process. I like to kind of do it as I go rather than get to the end and then have 200 items that require attention. I do it every few par paragraphs along. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Oh, I see one here. We've got a little tip there on how to get the. Yeah. The Grammarly, okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep, Timothy. three dots allow you to locate and remove Grammarly or edit depending on your system. Perfect. That's a good suggestion. All right, so we are hitting our almost the top of the hour. So, any other questions um, that we can help answer about Kaltura, PowerPoint? Anything? I think. 
We are done. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, appreciate you attending and hopefully got a, some few helpful tips. Um, as Nicole mentioned earlier, we'll be recording this and it will be uh, in the Center for Teaching and Learning if you would like to check it out later. And that's also where we will um, put a copy of the, the PowerPoint and also the little uh, planning document for when you're planning out your PowerPoint presentations.